Yeah, great to be with you all. And thank you for the warm introduction, Dana. As uh, Dana mentioned, I'm Will Waters. I lead product marketing here at Exactly. And uh, again, really excited to be here and talk to you through kind of what our customers are experiencing and what we're hearing from them kind of on a day-to-day -day basis and, and how that relates to how they're looking to unlock their revenue potential heading into this year. And so now I've only got about 20 minutes or so, I'm gonna try and leave a couple minutes for questions, but uh, you know, obviously Dana, feel free to jump in if there is anything urgent that uh, we need to cover here. So let's go ahead and get in. Um, as I mentioned, I think it's helpful to kind of set the stage and you know, really highlight a few things that we're hearing from our customers as they look about this kind of sales transformation, revenue transformation journey. And so what we find is the three common themes around things that are challenges that they're experiencing and maybe some inhibitors to reaching that revenue potential are really bucketed into three kind of different ways. So number one, obviously is market turbulence. So, you know, even dating back to the, the COVID pandemic, interest rate hikes, supply chain issues, we're kind of consistently seeing that there's this ever-changing macroeconomic climate that's impacting how businesses need to operate, how they need to shift and navigate between the different market forces that are kind of impacting their day-to-day. -day. Obviously, you know, from this conference, we've heard a lot about AI. And so this concept of technology advancement, so how rapidly technology is changing and how we need to be able to, to deploy that technology, how we need to be able to use it in our day-to-day is certainly something that is, is is very top of mind in how they're trying to kind of figure out their strategies and align their strategies with those technologies. And then third is this concept of organizational focus. So as we've kind of seen, you know, throughout the, the last few years, there is this kind of concept of this balance between growth and profitability. So is it a growth at all costs kind of strategy or is it a bit more scaled, a little bit more focused around, hey, we need to be thinking about margins. We need to think about go-to-market efficiencies a bit more. We need to be a little bit more hyper-focused around how we can be more profitable. But ultimately, what does that mean from a sales organization's perspective? So if we're seeing those market forces making it challenging for us to reach our revenue potential, what do we actually need to be able to unlock that revenue potential? And so when we talk to our customers and we talk to our sales leaders that we work with, it's really the three things that they need and what they're telling us that they want more of in order to be successful. So the first is solutioning that promotes this business agility. So I think we ended the last session around, you know, does the platform that you have, like, can it be aligned with your sales methodology? Can it be aligned with your go-to-market model? Can it be aligned with the activities that you know that your teams need to be successful? So you need that agility to be able to, to not only meet your unique needs, but also meet the needs as it is impacted by the market and what your buyers are telling you. The second thing is, again, you know, probably a pretty consistent theme for this particular conference is how do I more intentionally deploy AI? So how do I use AI, again, as we heard in the previous session around conversations? How do I use AI from a sales execution, sales engagement perspective? So that is something that we, you know, continuously hear about from our sales leaders is how, how do we want to be able to, again, be as intentional as possible with this AI to maximize performance and efficiency? And then the third thing I think, which is particularly critical, is as we think about how challenging it can be to balance that profitability and growth, is that connective tissue between chief revenue officers and sales leaders and the CFOs and the Office of Finance. So how can we foster that collaboration? How can we foster those relationships to help us you know, achieve our shared goals as we move forward? So again, as we think about the challenges that our customers are telling us about, here's the kind of solutioning that we're feeling that they are they're, they're telling us that they need. And ultimately, what does that result in? You know, when we talk to these leading organizations that are able to navigate those challenges that are kind of deploying solutions in this way, we think about it from more of a kind of holistic revenue lifecycle perspective. So it's not linear. It's actually this continuous process that involves all of these key mechanisms within your revenue ecosystem that are going to help you be as successful as possible. And that really starts with the planning phase. And so how am I defining the resource allocation, so the resources that I need, in order to facilitate and achieve the success that I want to see from a go-to-market strategy standpoint? Then it comes to, okay, how am I designing the incentives component of that plan. And so how can I model out the financial returns that I'm seeing from those types of investments from, from a go-to-market perspective? So are those things aligned? 
And then once we've once we've planned, once we've designed, now that as we kind of deploy those solutions and we deploy the the plans and and the things that we've modeled, how do I effectively govern those changes? So as we as we mentioned around kind of mark, uh, macroeconomic shifts, go to market shifts, we're asked we're asked to be able to pivot quickly in many many different ways. And so how do I effectively govern those changes that we know inherently will come up throughout the course of the year? And then also, how do we effectively align the planning components, how we design, how we govern those changes, and then ultimately, how do we administer, again, for probably most of the folks on the call today, how do we govern the most important part of that factor and motivate our teams and administer those things, most of, administer those incentives and those go-to-market models most effectively to optimize performance? And then the third piece here, which I think is also, or excuse me, the fifth piece <laughs> that I think is most critical is actually how do we do that in real time? So actually, how do we have a real time view to manage that execution from a go-to-market perspective? So how do we bring all these things together? How do we harmonize all of them together in a more continuous fashion? And then, oh, by the way, again, very consistent theme, how do I intentionally deploy AI to most to maximize the efficiency across all these processes? And again, to make sure that they're working and operating in harmony. So again, this is really when we talk to companies that feel like they're doing a, a very good job and they're really doing some cutting edge and innovative work around this space, this is in general how they're thinking about the revenue ecosystem. So obviously the execution and the administrative incentives is, is critical because we're looking at real-time capabilities and we're you know, understanding and identifying how we can effectively motivate our teams, but it also is those up, uh, upstream processes around, you know, how do we deploy territories, how do we design plans, and how do we model out capacities and quotas and things of that nature. So it's so it's really important to think about this in more of a holistic, continuous way. But ultimately, you know, let's kind of come back and let's double click on that AI kind of component. How do we actually use AI as a differentiator? And so as I kind of thought about this, this conference and what we want to talk about here and what, again, we've already kind of heard a little bit of this today, what are the areas in which AI can actually help us be a differentiator as we operate throughout these different models and how we kind of think about navigating these different challenges within the market? And so the way that I kind of thought about it, which, you know, help from our products organization that I think, you know, is a really interesting way to think about it is, we kind of look at this convergence between revenue optimization and seller efficiency. So I know we've heard a little bit more about kind of using AI in, in sales conversations in the previous session. But again, as we think about it a little bit more holistically, I think there's some really key areas that are going to be critically important as we think about how we can intentionally deploy AI. So if we kind of start from the left, obviously, you know, can AI be a supporter and a driver of how we under better understand what our coverage and capacity models look like? How do we make sure that we have the right capacity to ensure the right coverage? How do we better predict what seasonality might be impacting our business and the success of our business? How do we maybe get a bit more insight into what reps within our teams are maybe a risk of a trading or maybe leaving the organization based upon various different factors on performance, pipeline generation, uh, actual forecast calls that they're making. How do we better estimate potential commissions? And I think this is a particularly relevant thing because when we look at our solutioning, obviously as an, an incent uh, company that we, we started with incentives, we wanted to think, how do we marry the, or how do we bridge the gap between incentive plans, incentive modeling with real-time pipeline data? And so as we think about that, you know, being able to say, here is my real-time pipeline view, but then also being able to marry that with incentive plans and get an output that tells me, hey, this is what a potential commission could be on this particular deal or at the aggregate level, I think is a really important factor that AI can also support uh, in, in driving the motivation and also giving us a better understanding, again, of that balance between what's the potential cost of, of my go-to-market and what's the potential cost of my plans with what is actually happening in real time. And so I, I think that that's a really exciting kind of advancement that we're seeing a lot of companies work with today. And then, you know, a couple other things that I think are really important. So obviously, you know, for this particular audience, you know, how long is it going to take my reps to ramp? So looking at historical data, using AI as an output to, pro to give me a better prediction around what ramp times look like. 
how do I optimize my territory? So how do I make sure that, okay, now that I have my coverage and capacity, do I actually have my territories optimized for my go-to-market performance and my revenue performance? How do I better deliver sales forecasts? I know this is a very, very hot topic, you know, within the sales forecasting space. So how do I leverage AI to be able to that to be that objective person in the room as I think about what my numbers look like, what, what you know, particular sales reps are running those types of deals in the pipeline, but then also how do I actually triangulate those two components with the objective perspective? Really, really interesting stuff. And then of course, you know, we talked a little bit about sales coaching in the previous session around, you know, how do we get more intelligence from AI around the kind of conversation intelligence and things of that nature? Well, why not? Why can't we surface that information? Why can't we surface those kind of coaching insights in the moment as we're navigating these types of deals? So again, we, we kind of talked about repetition and cadences and things like that. What we are hearing a lot of companies and, and a lot of our customers talk about is, you know, I, I, I can't be riding shotgun with, <laughs> with my reps on every single, you know, at, at every moment of the day. But how can I reinforce those behaviors with a kind of pre-surfaced uh, insight from a coaching perspective throughout the course of the day, throughout the course of the way that they're managing their pipelines? And so I think that's another really interesting component that a lot of our customers are thinking about. And then finally, you know, I, I didn't touch on this one, but opportunity health. So obviously, are we taking all of the activity data, all the relevant historical data, all the information that is contained within opportunities, and how are we surfacing the actual health of that opportunity uh, supported by, by AI. So what are the, the corners that we need to be able to look around? What are the potential blind spots that we might have um, within you know, opportunity management and making sure that we have the opportunity health? So that's a, that's a lot to take in. There's a lot of different opportunities. I just wanted to highlight a few things that, you know, what we hear from our customers and the way that they're wanting to think about, you know, optimizing an, an inefficient revenue ecosystem. And then, oh, by the way, like we haven't even gotten to the, the generative AI component. So what, what can generative AI and where can generative AI be a factor in all of our day-to-day -day operations? And so when we think about it, you know, and some of these, you know, may not on the surface look particularly relevant to, to, to a sales leader or CRO, but in actuality, when the teams that we're working with behind the scenes, these are the solutions that they need to better support your organizations. And so when we think about solution configuration and plan generation, again, those are things that may become particularly to mind to some in the sales in the sales realm. But also when we work with RevOps teams, when we work with comp compensation teams, the faster that we can generate those capabilities, the faster that we can include historical data and future predictions around what is optimized in those arenas, those are those are really important factors. And again, are only going to help uh, from an efficiency gain perspective for for your teams. And then the other three, I think, should be pretty self-explanatory. And we're already seeing some of that come about today. So obviously, the the chatbot uh, component is is pretty prevalent today. Uh, I think, how do we automate those tasks? So I know it kind of came up in, in some of the chat. I was just perusing some of the chat in the previous previous session around, you know, how do we kind of automate the, the generation of emails and some of these other tasks that, you know, can be a bit tedious, but actually, you know, but do take up a lot of time for reps. And so how do we operate more efficiently there? And then I think the, the big key and the reason why I wanted to place this at the center is data exploration. So if we need to be able to double click into different areas, we need to sift through different data models, you have to sift through different data sets, you know, it can be a very time consuming process. So how can we best surface that information and those details more quickly uh, in the moment, I, you know, it's only going to help us operate more efficiently and, and focus on the things that are going to be generating revenue. So I want to be to make this particular visual though the focus of my my day to day just because I think you know I, it's particularly important for a lot of the talks that we're hearing and so hopefully it was helpful. And I'll just finish here you know with a, with a quick plug for exactly and so as we've kind of consumed all of the feedback from customers as we've kind of talked to sales leaders, CFOs, heads of rev ops, heads of comp you know throughout the past few years, what we found is that ultimately the best way to execute on all of those different items is to come with an intelligent revenue platform. And so that means the ability to combine prepackaged but extensible solutions with the underpinning of advanced data and AI. And so at exactly, you know, we have 18 plus years of pay and performance data at our disposal. And as we think about AI, I guess a bit more holistically, 
many of the customers, many of the analysts, and, and many of the different folks in the community that we talk to are recognizing the fact that you know AI can be a huge accelerant to a lot of different operations, a lot of efficiency gains. But ultimately, if you're not sitting on the right data, you know it's still going to be a situation where you're going to need to have to go and find that data. And so at exactly, you know, we want to make sure that we're promoting the fact that we do have, you know, 18 plus years of pay and performance data. And so as an underpinning of all of these different composable solutions, it's going to be a huge, you know, factor for us. And we're already seeing that pay dividends with some of our customers around how do I take some of the prepackaged capabilities that I have today, but then also look at the natural adjacent workflows that I have and build a more tailored solution, a more nuanced solution that's very unique to me and my business. So how do I take something that's maybe within this incent realm and think about, okay, well, what are the other things that I'm still stuck maybe doing in spreadsheets and how do I bring those things online to better automate, better operate more efficiently? And then ultimately, again, in that particular case, serve the, the sales orgs more efficiently so that they're not spending their time thinking about their incentives. They actually know exactly what they need to go and get and, and generate revenue for the business. And so I'll just kind of finish up here in saying, you know, I really appreciate the, the opportunity to speak with you today. You know, I think we're at a really exciting time from an exactly perspective, but also, you know, want to make sure that, you know, I wanted to highlight a lot of the things and similar kind of challenges that our customers are facing and, and, and maybe give a little bit of thought to, to how they're, they're navigating those challenges. So I, I'll again finish here. And then I wanted to leave just a couple of minutes for any questions. Um, you know, if you do want to learn more, obviously you can find us on LinkedIn. You can reach out to me directly. I'd love to connect with you all, or there's more information you know, available on exactlycorp.com. So again, really appreciate your time and, and thanks for, for listening to, uh, to a product marketing guy talk for a few minutes. Um, yeah, really enjoyed it. Well, it was great, Will. And we did have a question or two come in. So let sure. me serve the first one up for you. Chat bots. Uh, the idea here is that they're more frustrating than helpful. Uh, do you have a perspective on on how best to address that? Yeah. So yeah, I could I could totally appreciate the sentiment. <laughs> you know, I think we've all been uh, on maybe an airline website or two. Sorry for the airline folks out there where they're they're trying to get an answer when a flight's delayed, uh, and it could be a bit frustrating. Um, so I would probably think a little bit more differently about the question first. So like, how are we actually trying to deploy these chatbots? So like, what is our end goal from deploying those chatbots? So is it to, you know, surface details on a deal? Is it to simply send information on a website and send more targeted information on the website? And so I think more often than not, and this maybe is a little bit more of the theme of the AI conversation, I think, is that, you know, just in a silo, a chatbot can be frustrating. But if it's deployed intentionally and it's deployed with a clear end goal in mind, that's, I think, when we see a lot of value and a lot of uh, you know advancements and, and a lot of uh, efficiency gains, I should say, uh, from that perspective. So, But yeah, appreciate the question. And I would say, um, do you have any thoughts in terms of how to, with so much technology available and, uh, you know, Digging into, I wrote it down here. You had a, a optimization, um, efficacy, uh, alignment, solution configuration. That can sometimes make senior leaders, CEOs, COOs, it can make them glaze over a little bit. Yeah. Given the fact that you know there's this pressure to sort of conserve investment, and uh, you know people can lose focus when you start throwing those terms around. Yeah. How do you best define the value? Uh, if you're somebody who wants to advocate for uh, taking on this work, you see what's coming in terms of AI. Yeah. How can we best advocate, you know, at the C-suite level for something like this? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it's a great question. And and yeah, I appreciate you bringing that because I do want to double click on that because I, I think the intent of showing those things is, is actually the efficiency that can be gained in those areas with AI. And so, again, as we think about solution configuration, it's okay, like, let's go put a team on it. So we have this solution, but we need to go and we need to deploy a more tailored solution. We need to build something, whatever the scenario may be with the use of, of artificial intelligence in different and various ways, specifically around generative AI, we're actually seeing that the amount of people that need to be involved or the amount of time that it would take to configure that solution is being reduced. And so we wanna double click in on that specific piece 
And so thank you. I mean, I appreciate you bringing that up. I would think about it because I know we're at time. I would think about it more of when you think about that kind of lower box, what are the solution, what are the um, efficiency gains that I can receive from generative AI in those areas? And so um, that's that's kind of how I would think about it is we're already seeing efficiency gains along all of those fronts um, from a generative AI perspective. <laughs>